before we get into the show this week. Hello, future people, says Brian with a Y. This is really long and involved, so you're going to you're gonna have to listen and bear with me. I've been listening to Critical Hit for just under a year after a member of my uh, AMT Guard LARP, Amped Guard LARP, got me into it. As of this writing, I'm, I'm on episode 370. I was going to wait to write in with some questions until I was up to date with the current content, but one thing keeps bothering me. Why exactly is the sand- Salamander's Coil evil? It gets, uh, don't worry, I'm going to explain a little bit more. But I will say this, I don't know if this person is being goofy or if they're being serious. So Brian, if you're being serious, I'm treating this with all seriousness. From what I gather, the Salamander's Coil wants Professor Lex so they can travel to other vertices and harness their resources to continue fueling and growing the massive industrial war machine that they've built. I get that they started off on the bad foot with the party, but trying to capture and or kill them. But since then, what have they done that's so evil? As soon as the party made it to the southern continent, virtually everyone they've seen has some sort of gainful employment because of the Salamander's Coil. Salamander's Coil is responsible for revolutionary technological developments, modernization and added convenience to many of life's daily struggles, an advanced and competitive economy, continued research and development of both technological and arcane mysteries, and so on. On the boat, Little Sparkle made it sound like she hated the coil because her parents both died in a mining accident. Accidents! On the train, the two coil operatives Kit and Sparkle were forced to sit with spoke of truants as though they were great things to be feared. Just when Little Sparkle and the Sparkle Tones were, were already, we've already seen, a, uh, seen assaults on innocent security officials, massive deconstruction of property where civilians, civilians work, and a frightening, growing frequency of the discussion, should we just kill the random dude who was just doing his job? From what I've seen on the show, it seems like the Coil are the good guys just trying to bring their diamond-in-the-rough civilization more uh, to more of their own continent and to spread their industrial growth and economic benefits to other worlds while the Sparkle Tones are acting as the evil insurgents killing civilians, robbing miners, destroying labs, and burning, blowing up places uh, of peaceful employment. What gives? I mean... I mean... I'm sure Columbus didn't mean to destroy. Well, this isn't about Columbus. It's not about... um... No, but I'm saying that... Yes, it may look like... I mean, go back and and the the threat of the military industrial complex is is always something of great concern. If you want to just look at it from that point. Yeah. uh, You know, the salamander's coil isn't about so much about colonialism, although there's something there as well, um, because there are marginalized races as well. But it's about runaway capitalism. And. I think sometimes the idea of really bad capitalism is hard for people to see as as a problem because um, in the West, at least, uh, we all live in capitalist societies to varying degrees, right? Uh, You can always argue that there's a strong socialist core to literally every country, including the United States. You know, we have post offices and roads and things like that, that are maintained by the government through taxes, uh, social programs and such. Um, but, uh, we are not inherently taught that capitalism is bad. And in fact, uh, we're often taught that it's a good and B that, people who stand against it are impeding progress. So, I mean, it's it's a fair look at it. Uh, definitely, if you want to say, like, everybody's the hero of their own story. So, you know, if you are a, um, a worker living in the shadow of the salamander's coil and a uh, bunch of truants break into a facility where all you do is sweep and they end up blowing it up and you end up getting injured or dying. It's like, well, those truants. Yep. Or unemployed. Um, It's like, well, those truants sure are bad. Right. And uh, the answer is, uh, yeah, maybe. But um, the issue is um, when you take a step back is like, what were those truants after? Why were those truants doing what they were doing? And the, reason is that the salamander's coil is uh, completely unsympathetic and uncaring of the people of the southern continent, right? They literally enslaved elves. They've 
all but enslaved minotaurs. Like minotaurs are essentially third class citizens. Um, the only reason why Kenku can get ahead is because of like racial bias, and they just assume it's like, oh, Kenku are smart, so we can employ them as bureaucrats. Um, so um, their city states are completely economically beholden to them, and all the guilds are bad, or or just as bad um, uh, w- within their own city states. But it's difficult when you. Uh, when you walk yourself back to your everyday life and you're like, boy, Amazon sure has given me a lot or, um, you know, Kimberly Clark or I don't know, Philip Morris, um, you know, take, yep. Take, take your pick. Pfizer is like, these companies have made our lives better. They sure have. That's like, but you know, at what cost? Right. And in, uh, Media like Critical Hit, like the Void Saga, uh, allows us to make everything larger than life, right? So here's a company that, you know, probably does have a bunch of sweatshops, um, but that's small potatoes compared to the fact that they have a laser that turns you into a monster. <laughs> um, so it's, you know, it's it, it's it's inflated, it's expanded, it's wackier, partially to also not feel so bad about it. You know, it's like you can always yeah, rely on the fact that like, so therefore they're bad. We must stop them kind of stuff. Well, yeah. and, and not just that, but, you know, it, it also allows you to lean on that aspect of things rather than the allegory of, oh, well. It's like they're Walmart, right? And mm-hmm. I'm bad for going to Walmart, right? It's like you don't have to approach it that way. You you, you certainly don't. Um, so I can see I can see that point because it is difficult to oh, no. to I, walk I yourself totally out that of that. Yeah, yeah, I, I can totally see Brian where you're coming from. And again, I don't want to make light of it, but it, it does seem, at least to me, the the main. You know, I'm glad you're talking about capitalism here, Rodrigo, because to me, a lot of this was also. Um, imperialism and colonialism, sure, sure, uh, sure. Mm-hmm. you know, taking over these lands that people were like, no, these are our lands. Why are you infringing coming in here, bringing your stuff that we don't want? And therefore we must rid ourselves of you kind of thing. Um, but I, but I do enjoy the capitalism thing and I think it's good. We talked about this before on the major spoilers podcast, um, that there can be hidden messages and things, but there's not always a message in everything. And one thing that we can often fail on is something called the fallacy of the writer's intent, Mm -hmm. right? Where we write something in or we believe that the writer was meaning one thing when he's, when he's uh, totally believing another. And I love seeing what other people come up with when, when they listen to our shows and they're trying to find meaning or trying to get something out of it. And I'm, I'm glad Brian brought this up. Uh, It's probably something a lot of our other listeners were thinking uh, as well. Oh my goodness. The, the sparkle tones are nothing more than, uh, you know, than uh, gorillas yeah, in the jungle. Yeah, yeah. terrorists. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything else you want to add to uh, to Brian's email or his comments? Um, definitely. Thanks for writing in. I, yeah, definitely. I, I love this. this you know, my day. In uh, fact, we recorded this much further ahead than what we normally would have. Yeah. So yeah, definitely. I mean, those are, it's like, we need to analyze our media, right? And it's like, mm-hmm. this is, this, this is a fine analysis of it. And yep. I, I definitely don't want to discourage anybody from doing that. Yep. Definitely. Uh, listeners, if you have questions, comments, whatever podcast at major spoilers.com and listen, uh, maybe we haven't been pushing this or talking about it enough on this show for you to get out there and check it out. But we do have a Patreon page at patreon.com slash major spoilers. And uh, for shows like Critical Hit, your support is is necessary. It's vital to keep shows like this going. So I know we have tens of thousands of listeners out there. And what I'm asking you to do is head over to patreon.com slash major spoilers right now and check out to, and see what we're doing and what we're trying to do to make major spoilers grow, which in return generates more stuff for you. And I think for fans of, of Critical Hit, Matthew... There's mm-hmm. a lot of reasons why you might want to become a five, ten, fifteen, or twenty-five dollar a month member, because you get a lot of bonuses and perks as well. That's true. You get access to the character sheets. Mm-hmm. You get access to exclusive art. You get access to behind-the-scenes information. And if 
if we get to that level, Stephen, yeah, this I next have heard goal. rumors. Yep. I have heard rumors that people will be able to get their critical hit early. Yeah, if you don't want to listen to an ad in front of critical hit, if you want it ad free, then uh, one of our upcoming goals or a goal that we may have passed, depending on when you're listening to this. Hello, future people. Still, there's another goal that uh, we're always trying to reach. Please hit it. But yes, uh, you will have access when you become a, a patron at patreon.com slash major spoilers. You get access to a secret RSS feed that you can just copy it. It's an audio RSS feed. You just copy the link and you put it into your uh, podcast player of choice. And anytime we release something at that level, you will get it, including critical hit a week earlier than everyone else. So there are people right now who could potentially be listening to next week's episode of critical hit right now. And it's ad free. What are you waiting for? Listeners do us a favor, help us out by helping yourself out by going over to patreoncom slash major spoilers and signing up today. Thanks so much for uh, checking us out this week. Now here is your episode. Critical Hit, a major spoilers podcast. Thank you so much for downloading and checking us out this week. Oh, we had quite the battle last time. Ooh, on Critical on, Hit. On Critical Hit. On Critical on Hit. hit. <laughs> on Critical Hit. And Rodrigo and I are the only ones that caught it, man. And here's the thing. Yeah. We didn't really finish the battle because we left one guy alive to interrogate. <laughs> well, so that's we, not, not finishing the battle. We probably ought to see if he's bled out over this past week or if he's still around to talk. So, Rodrigo, lead on, please. Ah, uh, yes. So, um, as you pointed out, uh, there was a pretty involved fight last time. On Critical Hit. On, on critical, critical Hit. hit. I already did this. <laughs> um, so, uh, uh, anybody, anybody want to recount what happened during that big fight? We got attacked uh, by I pirates. I got thrown in the friggin' ocean. <laughs> yeah. That Our ship sucked. was boarded by pirates, and then it turned out that the biggest and baddest pirate was big and bad and threw Ket in the ocean. He's yeah, now a fan is. favorite. <laughs> well, he's also at the bottom of the Astral Sea. So. Yes. There's no bottom to the Astral Sea. Actually, it's just the top of the sky. So he's that's on kinda, the prime material plane? That's kind of true. Yeah, uh, at least it's true that there is no bottom to the Astral Sea, as far as anyone knows. <laughs> um. Yeah, yes, that's right. Fan favorite cat got thrown into the sea, to the astral sea, exploded a little bit, and then spent a lot of that fight uh, kind of uh, spider manning his way around the boat. <laughs> that, was, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> Tell me that was the wrong choice to make. Nope, nope. No, that, was was, cool. that was pretty solid. I, you know, that's actually, I think uh, that fight, uh, if there is an MVP, it's probably cat. Because he uh -oh. very quickly figured out a way of how to m bring his abilities to bear, even though they were being uh, lessened by everything. And then, you know, spent uh, spent half the fight uh, doing that, you know, what that like old Adam West Batman and Robin thing where you're just like walking up the wall. <laughs> but it's like and then it's clearly just it's out. clearly just like a flipped over image. In any case, yes, that uh, that happened. Uh, the enemies were something that the players or the characters had never seen before. These sort of yellow skinned, scraggly looking pirate types uh, who were also martial artists, who were also shooting uh, psychic beams at them um, and gnashing their teeth and throwing them into the astral sea through fiery vortices. <laughs> so uh yeah we'll pick up with uh the party uh just in the last few seconds probably taking a breath from that fight i will dismiss my lightning ball okay and then i think uh where is cat cat should probably get down there and interrogate the, this man <laughs> that Sakar is holding on to Sparkle. Or Sparkles. Sparkles pretty yeah. good at that, too. Uh, Randus can stand there with his battle fist of, of doom over the guy's head. <laughs> Randus, yep. look intimidating. 
Why don't we tell the captain that we're okay so that she doesn't try to uh, blow up our engine? Good plan. That's, yeah, I'll, I'll <sighs> go tell him. Okay. You go down to the engine room? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. you walk past the, the crew in the in the lower decks who are all kind of nervous. Uh, hey guys, uh, the, the fight's over. We took care of him. Uh, so I think we can uh, go back to our business. The uh, captain comes out of the engine room. Hey. Oh, good. You took care of it? Yes, yes, captain. Uh, yeah, uh, th- everything's taken care of. We uh, got one left who we're going to ask some questions of. But uh, yeah, th- uh, seems like we're in the clear now. No. Oh. Well, be careful. Yeah, yeah, we'll be careful. The uh, captain comes back up with you. Yeah. Head on it. Uh, how are things here? Sparkle is patting him down in search of hidden weapons. Nope. Doesn't have anything on him. Was he one of the ones that was storing mine bolts, though? Yep. Yep. Cool. Uh, maybe tie him up and hopefully he can't do it without access to his hands. Okay. You tie him up. Tie him really well. Who are you? Where do you come from? Is he conscious yet? He is not conscious yet. We will conscious him. That's that's, that's not going to help right now, Arm. Uh, then while we wait for him to regain consciousness, uh, maybe we should go check out their little, uh, pirate boat. That seems No, why don't we just wait a little bit until we can get him unconscious in case their pirate boat is filled with traps or something. Ah. We can awaken him. All right, then slap him or something. Sakar takes out his fiery sword. Hey, don't kill him. He's just going to brand him. I'm just going to awaken That's him. That's harsh. It is. Sparkle just slaps him. <laughs> Sakaar or what? the pirate? Yeah, which one? Both? <laughs> oh, uh, the captive. Okay. Captive. I did not hear captive, captive, captive. to start with. It's like, what did the captain get yes, involved captive, in this? captive, not captain. Well, the captain is here. But yes. Okay. Is he you alive? slap the captive and um yep you slap him and there is like no moment of like um disorientation or anything like you slap him and his eyes just open and he looks right at you he's got yellow uh eyes and they're like super bloodshot just say hello why did you attack us? Hmm. It seemed like you had a nice ship. So you're pirates? In a sense, we were pirates. Now we are privateers. Oh, so who's employing you? Your goat-headed goddess, uh calling the shots nowadays oh that's unfortunate that he's uh that you attacked our ship because we've got one of his uh chosen acolytes on board hi he looks over and looks back at little sparkle we're not concerned why is that He was explicit about what we should be doing. And what is that? Mm. For us specifically, to stop any important looking ships that we saw on the way in. To this island? Mm Mm-hmm. And how long have you been stationed here? Oh, just a few days. So as soon as the 
that's before the island appeared, right? Mm-hmm. No, the island has always been here. It's before the star appeared. Yeah, it was the ah. same. Randis and Orm have been on the island before. Interesting. So he predicted that people would be coming here even before the stars. Are you part of a larger crew or organization? Oh, yes. The goat headed god brought us back from the far brights. There are many of us in your waters now. She like looks at the others. Have you, have you heard of the far bright? Um, I don't believe so. Yes, I you've all heard of the far bright. We've all heard of it. Yes, yes, we have. Except for Sakar, he hasn't heard of that. It's just like the outer rim, right? Right, right. Yep, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> yeah. So it's just the more distant part of the Astral Sea. Must have taken you a long time to get here. Our ships are fast. And we've had plenty of time. When did you strike this deal with the god? It was some time ago. Enough to get plans, weaponry. He kind of looks in the direction of where you threw the uh, anchor. New equipment. Hmm. Great. What do you call your people? We are the Gith. And what has he offered you in exchange for your service? A place at the table uh, and an opportunity to plunder. Do you have your own gods? No, we do not accept godly rule. That is why we were banished. But you've accepted an alliance with a god. Yes. <laughs> Where else he's... are your people? What? Look at Kat, what were you going to say? You don't think he's going to rule once this is over? Rule is fine. Pirates don't care about who rules. Fair point. Where else did he send you? Many places. We are a horde. Lovely. Do and you know any of these other places? Do I know any of what other places? Where your people have been sent. I know some. I know we have surmounted the fortress of the dragon god. Great. So your people are part of the armada that was sent there? That is correct. Any of the less obvious places yes plenty there are Do you have dark to... places where nothing is and yet our ships were sent there there are old islands that lie completely in shadow and our people were sent there were you sent there to are there just... maps on your ship no were you sent to these places just to attack any who might approach, or were you sent there to try to communicate with anyone that might be there? Oh, uh, we are not very diplomatic, at least. Well, I can <laughs> I can tell. Are you are most of your people capable of the magic you demonstrated? He laughs. It is not magic. That is why the status side doesn't work on us. Oh, what is it? 
It is the power of the mind. Power of the mind. That's cool. How did you learn that? It is natural to us, oh. although it does take some training. Ah. So what, you can read our minds or just attack our minds? I can read your minds, I can attack your minds, and I can make you see things. Mm. Cool. So why aren't you attacking us right now? Because I'm gone. <laughs> I, like, slap him. Yep, he just... Yep, you slap something. <laughs> that was scary. Damn it! No, something's wrong. I focus and try to, I don't know, basically roll to disbelieve. Uh, okay. Yep, there's nothing there. This is some sort of illusion. Is the boat still there? It's sinking. Uh, okay. Good to know. Should have let me burn him. Yeah, but then we wouldn't know about all this stuff. Yeah, we learned stuff. Yeah. yeah. This he wasn't was going to kill him with the fire. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a big fan of maiming for no reason. Maim is such a harsh word. You didn't get thrown in the drink. I have plenty of reason. Pleasant, pleasant. <laughs> Is the ship sinking at a rate that it would be ridiculous to attempt to see if there's anything on it of value? Um, it would be heroic to jump in now <laughs> and see if there's anything of value. Don't, don't tell him that. <laughs> Why would you say something like that to me? <laughs> that's, that's just Because crazy it's talk. you. Uh, okay, let me rephrase. <laughs> Don't Would do one it. survive an attempt to even try such a thing? Only the Basically. greatest of heroes would survive <laughs> an attempt to do such a thing. Uh, uh, you're an evil person. Uh, you're yes. the devil. All right. Well, hmm. Asmodeus was uh, very well prepared for this. He was. I assume he's been researching since the last time we were here. Or before. Or during looking at Ket. All the above. What? Don't you have a connection to Asmodeus? Can he see what you're doing at all times? No. No? <laughs> Guy? Ah, what? I would say... Asmodeus can't see what we're doing right now, correct? Like, there's there's not that much of a connection between a patron and. No, I, I, he shouldn't be able to like see things through your eyes or anything. That's what good. Yeah, but gods can scry. Yeah. And uh, what kind of control does Asmodeus have over your? Your monkey there, uh, Ket. None? So he's not reporting back? No, he's he's involved with the Cobalt Alley, not with... Okay. Not with old Goathead. Mm, should we take precautions like that? Like avoiding saying his name? Oh, if you say it three times, does he appear? If it's, he does, we probably called him down a dozen times in recent weeks. Yeah. Yeah. We I'm going more with it's usually easier for a god to see something when they're being talked about, uh, I guess. Reason. So a good idea. I don't just, really know much about gods. Just call him the goat head god. Will that or do the perhaps, same thing? I mean, that uh, what was his name? The Gif? The Gif. Seems like he was not ready to say his name outright. Mm. It's possible. I don't know that he necessarily knew his name. Could have been a sign of disrespect, like specifically against gods, to not call them by their name. True, true. Entirely possible. He definitely had some sort of dialect. 
Perhaps he's just strange when he speaks. Uh, well, perhaps that's something we can get researched the next time we're back at base. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe ask the captain if he's ever run into these. No, but I've heard stories. Hmm. What have you, what have you heard? Well, he pretty much covered it. Scourge from beyond the far bright. Back for some reason. I guess now we know why. I have heard of them attacking... Uh, other ships carrying priests and the priests <laughs> had some trouble warding them off. This mm. all seems to track. Well, I say we do what we came here before, before we have more interference. Yes. Uh, Agreed. I, is there a lookout nest or a crow's nest on this ship? Yeah. yeah it's on the top of the mast. Okay. Uh, I would have someone up there scanning to make sure that there's not more than one ship in the area. Well, there was, but you guys disabled it. Ah. Yeah. We avoided all right but this one it. ship. Awesome. It's a pontoon chop. It's going to go down in legend. <laughs> yes, well, then I guess we should head in. Yeah. It's going to take us a little bit to get to the island, right? Uh, no, you guys were heading towards it uh, when you were intercepted, and then you guys had kind of been traveling like, traveling, like parallel to its coast. So mm-hmm. it's still in view. So, yeah, it, it won't take you very long. But I mean, we're talking like, I mean, I'm not talking like it's going to take us an hour. I'm talking like we've got, you know, five, ten minutes before we're going to disembark or anything, at least, right? Yeah. And we've got a scene, a scrying pool thing that we can communicate back to home base with, correct? That yep. is correct. Oh, sure. Yeah, we should warn them about the <laughs> the gif. That that was my plan. Are there dead gif still on the ship? Yep. How many? Four? Uh, we'll say two. Two. Were the little guys gif as well? Yep. Okay. And what shall we do with them? Toss them into the sea? All right. (laughs) Sakaar tosses them into the sea. I mean, let me, yeah, we can, you know, search in case they have any maps or, you know. Gold. (laughs) Things things of secret signet rings. Are they even real? They are real. They are dead, correct? They are dead, yes. Oh, I will but, take a uh, short rest to spend a healing surge, if that's okay. That is fine. That seems like a good plan. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> uh, I will do the same. I will chuck them off the boat. Okay. How many do I need to spend? I just what need is to spend my one. current healing surge value? Same. You didn't get thrown into the Oh, yeah, I was. Yeah, he was the third one. Yeah, the only ones that didn't get thrown in were Little Sparkle and Sakaar. And who is willing to donate healing surges? I have five left. I can give you Um, one. Probably not you. Can you bring up the uh, map again, Rodrigo? I don't know what my last information was. Yep. (laughs) Yes, you can pull as many as you need. I have like 37 now. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but we're not allowed to use yours because it's all poisony vampire blood. Uh, Randus can figure out a way to centrifuge that out. <laughs> oh, okay, good. Now that because that, that last you know time was creepy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> poisony. How dare you? Look, it made like Orum try to crawl up a wall. Yes, well, Orum is particularly sensitive to manipulation. He spent an entire afternoon flat. Uh, so you can take one from me as well. I've still got ten. I'm only going to spend the one. Uh, you still have ten. That's more than I ever have. I have <laughs> to start with. I'm a oh. based hero. Oh, are we playing <laughs> who has healing searches? No. 
Because we so. literally play this every time. <laughs> I know, it's stupid. <laughs> After it's every stupid. fight, it's the who has healing surges game. So I think I'll take two from Sakar and one from Ket. Okay. So I'm down to nine. Cool. It's, it's just that sometimes, Rodrigo, we play the who's the smartest or who's the sneakiest game, and I never get to play those games. Yeah, I, I, I guess. <laughs> so when we get to the who has more healing surges, sometimes you just want a neener. <laughs> I always forget how many healing surges Sakar actually has. It's been like a right. season since we've done that anyway. I right now, Sakar so. has 12 surges. All sure. right. So, short rest. Uh, this is a milestone, so you get an action point back. Yay. Yay. Um, and you have officially hit a milestone for the purposes of usually magic items that care about that. Extra. Yay. Um, I don't have to care about that. And then, who's going down to the. Uh, communications pool. Yo. Yeah. Yes, talky person. I'm taking yeah, I'll come the down trash, too. so I will not. All right, you activate the thing. Yep. All right, you see the ceiling of the um, library slash cartography area. Um, and a very bored-looking ninja. <laughs> Hi, Salad. No, no, it's just one of his ninjas. Ah. Oh, <laughs> never mind. Uh, we've made it to the island, or we're getting close to the island. Okay. Uh, we were attacked by Gith pirates. What's that? Uh, mostly just pirates, but they're a race from beyond the far brights. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, and they're in the employ of the god of tyranny. Hmm. And they have mind powers. Hmm. They and have... anti-magic artifacts. It like pulls out some paper and a quill and starts like writing stuff down. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, They've been deployed to points of interest throughout the Astral Sea. Including Islands of the Sleepers. Mm-hmm. Also, do you know if speaking a god's name helps them to scry or locate you? I don't, but I know that you can check for scrying sensors. It's a good call. Uh... Could you have someone double check on that question as well, please? Okay. How do you check for scrying sensors? You look really good. He just like does like a squint and like looks around. Yep, no scrying sensors here. Sparkle squints and looks around. Okay, give me a uh, perception check. Okay. And I'll help. <laughs> it's shake and bake. Yeah, do I get a bonus to perception checks? Or no, that's only around elves. Yep. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm a diplomat. He's a diplo elf. Yeah. A du- he's a duplo elf. He's a diplotic elf. <laughs> hey. Sweet. So, so I guess that's it, a that's 30. It. Yep. <laughs> uh, you do not spot any scrying sensors. Okay. And you can so, uh, you can carry this check outside to later if you want to check like if the rest of the party cool. is being scried on. Cool. Uh, so maybe next time we uh, go to both do a perception, you should help me since I seem to roll two better than you every time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. Yeah, even though my mod is four higher. <laughs> right. Psycho Gith pirates at the islands. Asmodeus in charge. That's all we needed to tell them, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. Have you made contact with Cord yet? Uh, no. We are approaching the island currently. All right. Uh, we got attacked on our way in and figured had a little bit of time to send an update. Uh, 
We'll report back with more news once we have it. Very well. I'll go report this. Thank you. And he skitters away. <laughs> go back upstairs. Yeah. Shut and up. I'll squint around upstairs to look for more <laughs> scrying sensors. Uh, you do not spot a scrying sensor, but you do spot a ship coming towards you from the island. Uh, we got incoming. More gift? Okay. I don't know. It's coming from the island, so hopefully not. Can we yeah, tell? This does, not, this does not appear to be a hostile ship. It is a it's a ship that's much smaller than yours, but it has a similar construction. It is a like a normal astral ship. Is it flying any flags? No, but uh, as it gets closer, you see that everyone on board is pretty much half naked. My kind of boat. Party boat. I thought we were visiting Cord, not Bacchus. Can we run up a flag denoting the desire to parlay, or is that really not necessary at this point? So they don't seem to be hostiles. Yeah. Yeah, they as they approach, they like slow down and turn their ship. And yeah. somebody, uh, a human who is wearing like a, a loincloth and like a, um, like a sash. A dude, like comes out and just shouts, "Hello there, travelers!" <laughs> just kind of waves back. Oh, Hello. Gre- greetings. Looks like we you have, had some uh, trouble there. Yes, we were attacked by pirates. Do you require any medical aid? Uh, no, thank you, though. Very well. What is your business here at the Path of Peonies? Diplomacy. He like turns back to look at his crew. Like turns back to you guys. Well, that's good, but uh, you want to be more specific. <laughs> <laughs> We're here okay. to discuss the current divine situation within the house. He, he we want to speak with Cord. Or a representative. Yeah, he like looks back, looks back towards you guys. You know, Cord is a god, correct? Yeah. All right. Do you represent anyone in particular, or are you just uh, some people who want to speak to Cord? We are acting as envoys to the god Arathis. He says, ah, very well. And then you, I mean, you guys are probably not all like lip readers, but you can tell that you know he looks around and he's like, they should have started with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's right. We really shut up. We have a tendency to overshare. This is a step in we. the right direction. We okay. <laughs> Follow us then. Thank you. And he Ship gets going and turns around and heads back towards the island. Should we deploy our, deploy our little landing ship? No, so. we should. Uh, we should get within the safety of their harbor. Okay. So um, you guys follow the ship, and uh, it brings you in. Closer to the island, uh, now you can see uh, that it is um, very hilly, very green, very pastoral. There are forested areas. Um, there's a lot of like little huts and habitations. And uh, they bring you around to um, a docking area. 
and motion for you to dock your ship there, which the captain then does. Turn to Randis and Orm. This is more or less what you two remember for the appearance? Pretty much, yes. Certainly people are more active. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Say, didn't you two get separated on this island the first time? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What were your dealings with Cord's people like when you came? Uh, well, they were kind of non-existent, right? Mm-hmm. Asleep. Yeah. Hmm. I'm not saying this was a walk in the park, but I mean, <laughs> yeah. They seem sociable enough. Mm-hmm. So uh, the captain comes down. He says, well, if you, uh, you all ready to go? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, well, we'll be here in case anything happens. That's, Thank you. Sounds good. They, like, lower the gangplank. Head on down. Yep, we'll get on the little boat and... Head over. No, you can just take we're, the we're dock. Okay, we're at dock. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll just step down to the little boat, go over to the other side of the dock, yep. step off the little boat. <laughs> we just want to really it's... use this boat, okay? We're pretty yep. excited about the little boat. It's a good boat. Well, <laughs> well don't worry. You'll, we go you'll... back to Fire Spider Island. Yep, that's right. Now you can go back to Fire Spider Island. Uh... And, like, actually go on Fire Spider Island as opposed to just kind of looking at it longingly. <laughs> yep. So we can plant the flag. Isn't isn't that nice when the when the tutorial's finally over and you can go to that place that you saw as you were like walking by? <laughs> mm-hmm. It's we like, oh, how do I get over there? It's not that interesting. All that's there is a uh a rusted ring. Yeah, like a like a middling sword. Mm-hmm. It would have been it would have been a lot more relevant at twelfth level. <laughs> it's still dust. Right. I'll just go for the collectibles. You can you know, you can crunch it into residual. <laughs> Yeah, there is a comic book page there, too, so you can get that. Sweet. <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, you guys come down. Uh, there is a um, a group there to meet you. It is two humans um, who are also wearing loincloths. Um, there's like a guy and he's just wearing a loincloth and there's a lady and she's wearing a loincloth and then just like a little thing just to cover her boobs um and a uh they are both flanking a minotaur who is male and is also just wearing a loincloth um all of these people are in ludicrous shape like they have very (laughs) very very well defined muscles um and are generally look very hale and, and and attractive and if you're into minotaurs the minotaur is pretty hot too <laughs> <laughs> greetings travelers says the minotaur hello. hello greetings i am great hoof oh hello great hoof i am up uh, ket hazard please I'll just kind of gesture to each person to introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Orum Rivendorn. I am Randus Duthane. Uh, you can call me a Little Sparkle. And I am Sakar. Well, welcome to the Path of Peonies. I understand you would like to speak to Cord. We would. Yes, yes. please. Well, Cord is busy at the moment, but uh, this might be a good opportunity to, and he kind of just turns around and starts walking, and his uh, people turn around and start walking as well. It might be a good opportunity to uh, maybe clean yourselves up a little. Yes, that would be lovely. We were attacked by pirates on the way here. Mm, Unfortunate. We have not had enough time to uh, 
get our navy functional again but once we do it should be a lot uh, safer to travel these astral waters good to hear so are you um, go ahead are you aware of the current situation here well we haven't heard much we know that the Treaty of Worms must have dissolved. Otherwise, our shores would not be once again open. That is correct. The uh, uh, Bahamut is dead. As mm. is, effectively, the um, Raven Queen. I see. And These are things the that you may want to bring up to Cord when you speak to him. Very well. Of course. Then, yes, that would be our plan. We wanted to speak to him about the current situation and um, his possible participation in a new treaty. I see. Well, I will inform him of that. Thank you. Is there so, a place where we might be able to clean up? Yes, I will take you there. Thank you. So uh, he walks you uh, through the docks and along the shore to a uh, big tent, like a pavilion, uh, next to a, a little, like a you know, like a large pond, very clear water. Mm -hmm. um, feel free to. Use this pavilion. Uh, somebody will come and uh, somebody will come and find you once court is ready. Okay. All Thank right. you. No problem. Uh, there will be someone nearby if you need anything else. And he kind of goes off with his peeps. Orm's already half out of his outfit, <laughs> ready to dive in. Start mending some holes. <laughs> <laughs> How's the water? What does everyone else do? Or I'm jumps into the water. What? What else? <laughs> uh, I will basically do a paranoid casing of the area first. <laughs> nice. Okay, just uh, give me a perception check. Cool. Like for scrying pools. Yeah. People hide in the bushes. Uh, only a 23. Okay. Um, yep, you don't, you don't spot anything dangerous. Um, there, you do see, um, you know, like a, some distance away on the hills, you do see people that appear to be, uh, either walking around, you do see some like fighting, although nobody seems to be freaking out about it so maybe it's like sparring Training. or something yeah yeah but they've given you lots of space you also do spot an attendant type person who is approaching your tent but doesn't doesn't go past a certain point just kind of making themselves visible cool this this one is wearing a little bit more clothes he's wearing like robes Hit. but they're really short robes uh, yeah, well, they're like knee length and, you know, they're the uh, sleeveless. Right. <laughs> Backless and sideless. It's cool. Uh, inside the That's... pavilion is, uh, is like a table. Um, on the table are two fairly large bowls. One of them has... Uh, green grapes and the other one has green olives <laughs> uh, there are also some kind of like uh, there's like a stack of like flat bread there as well and some uh, circular kind of uh, you know they're like pillows but they're not very like big and fluffy they're just kind of like it's like kind of very uh, it's like a slightly stuffed carpet more than an actual pillow. 
and you know there's like several of them strewn around the basically the grass because this thing doesn't have a floor and that's kind of all that's in here mm. cool. I will wash up though with probably less of the gusto of Orem oh Orem's already out and toweling himself off <laughs> And if there are no towels, he just walks around and air dries. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> of oh course, boy. that's it's all. <laughs> I'm sure it's all for the sensation of it, since uh, Orem looked perfectly fine already. Anyway, <laughs> of course, <laughs> <laughs> it's just an Orem thing. Uh, all right, Sakar will clean up and remove any blood from his armor or his hat. Okay. I say I will clean up as well. Uh, I'll also summon Shadow to check on him since you know the last fight didn't go all that well for him. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> he wait, his Shadow's not a daily, is he? No. Okay. No. <laughs> Reasonably That's... certain it's not. So let's check. Call Spirit Companion is an at will. Ah, well, there you go. Yeah. So yep, he appears and he seems fine. Is he an actual animal? No, he is is like a spiritual contract. Yeah. Yeah. I will snack on some olives and grapes. Okay. They are pretty good. Nice. I will commune with the spirits of the path of peonies. Okay. Uh, Give me a nature check. See if I can do a nature check. 38. Nice. That's pretty good. Yeah, natural stuff I'm natural at. (laughs) Um, So Sakaar concentrates and uh, closes his eyes and finds himself um, or begins to feel uh, the wind in his face, uh, but sort of at like er, like kind of weirdly irregular intervals. Mm-hmm. And uh, when he opens his eyes, he uh, finds himself um, on the sort of on the hump of a great boar who is kind of walking around, hasn't really noticed him, but this thing is like, you know, probably. 15 feet at the shoulder Mm -hmm. and it's just kind of going about its business eating things like rooting things out eating you know spirit tubers Mm. going to speak to it okay what do you say hey (laughs) who is there and kind of like does like a quick like hop to the side my name is Sakar. I'm a visitor. Oh, what Be- manner of spirit are you? Mm, I'm an Oblia. I've never Do heard you of have that. Any? Not everyone has. Oh, they Do just you call have a name? Great, they just call me Great Boar. Seems appropriate. What can you tell me of your home, Great Boar? It is very old, but has been asleep. Hmm. That I knew. Do you have any advice for a traveler? Yes. Arriving for the first time? Be strong. I oh, I have I another piece of advice. Mm-hmm. Do not be weak. (laughs) Also well within my purview. Thank you, Great Boar. You are welcome. Thing I still can't see, and he's kind of like scratching at the ground. (laughs) Kind of see if like you're under there. I'm not under there. I'm everywhere. Well, that seems very useful. And then I stop. Okay. You are back 
in the pavilion, I'm guessing? Yes. Okay. Does it seem appropriate to to like go shirtless in this in this realm, or would that be uh, it just... seems entirely appropriate. You have seen people be way nakeder than just not wearing a shirt. <laughs> All right. Like Orm, for example. And... <laughs> Roll them up, kids. It's time for shirtless Sikar. Why do you wear a carpet under your clothing? <laughs> <laughs> it's just an extra layer of pelt. <laughs> Ah, oh, you dare to mock the sacred carpet of Oblia. I'm just asking a question. It is a family birthright, my friend. Hmm. That's not actually true. No one in my family has this but myself. But still. <laughs> Orm wanders off to go get some grapes. <laughs> <laughs> Is this did Oram put any clothes back on? Oh yeah, he's dressed now. Okay, I was worried that we were just going to have naked Oram. <laughs> he's dried off. Okay, yeah. it's like flat Oram, naked Oram, burly Oram, <laughs> burly Oram. <laughs> so so many versions. Mm -hmm. yes. Angry Take Oram. Pick. <laughs> Missile <Double> Oram. Oram. <laughs> Arctic blast Oram with yep. special. Yeah, he's got little skis in the bottom. Yep. Look for the ones with the Kung Fu grip. Yeah, they cost extra, but they're really good. And then, of course, uh, if you buy the uh, Torkel Tone Mobile, it comes with another Orem. So. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you end up you with always, nine Orems. You always end up with so many Orems. Get yeah. Getaway driver Orem. Yep. Getaway driver Orem, yeah. Um, definitely, yes. <laughs> Inconspicuous human Orem. That's yeah. that's one of my favorites. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's a chase Can't figure, though. Him. Yep. You can only get inconspicuous uh, Orem in a two-pack with Shaven Randus. Yeah. <laughs> it's a strange sort of thing. So, yes. <laughs> uh, anybody else do anything while you're waiting? Uh, what's, what's you know, our... Go to the uh, attendant and see if there's... Um, is there, like, I don't know ceremonial clothes or something that we should be wearing for an audience? Mm, no, I don't think so. Uh, I think if you are delegates, you should probably wear uh, the sort of clothes that your delegation would want you to wear. Oh. Fair enough. Have you had any other visitors since the island woke up? No, you are the first. Um, I guess I'm just going to go into a meditative state since we don't know how long it's going to take for uh, for this audience. So if I could get a four hours in, that would be great. And if I don't, well, then I don't. Okay. So do we have a plan on how we're going to approach this? My yeah. usual. <laughs> what's what's that? You know, when you get mostly. Dude. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's fair. See what he wants. You you guys had dealings with him while he was asleep, so mm -hmm. I don't know how much that was worth. Just remember, Cord's focuses on. Righteousness and strength. Cool. Well, we can maybe inspire him by the righteousness of not being on the side of uh, the uh, bad guys in this one. Mm. Well, uh, and if the bad guys are getting their own way by show of force, mm. it could appeal to his sense of strength. Yeah, well, we just kicked some of their show of force into the Astral Sea, so... I if... so. I might focus on 
your previous battles. Mm -hmm. Perhaps let him know about the previous victories fought and the things that have happened while he was asleep that might support our cause. Not the place for modesty, then. <laughs> no. One would presume not. Really, talking to a god is never the place for modesty. Should it come to it, if we need a show of force, I think we can provide that. Yes, you yeah. can. <laughs> I think that may be something to keep in our proverbial pockets. All right. Seems reasonable. The uh, just happy we got here first. Agreed. The attendant comes into the pavilion. Uh, Cord will see you now. Thank you. And uh, you walk uh, away from the beach and up some hills and then off over there in a little valley, you can see him because mm -hmm. he's like 20 feet tall. Good job, yeah. dude. Like most of the gods. Yeah. For descriptive purposes, by the way, shirtless Sakar has been replaced by fully armored Sakar. Okay. <laughs> with, with both swords in, in showy, showy positions at his hips. Okay. Uh, Cord is a very tall, kind of a bronze-skinned man, not like supernaturally actual metal bronze, like just a guy with a good tan. <laughs> um, he's got uh, long brown hair and uh, he's wearing a loincloth and he's kind of uh, walking around this valley talking to someone like way down there. And uh, as you get closer, you see that it's um, Great Hoof. Hmm. and uh, he points in your direction and Cord sees you turns around sees you and starts walking towards you the uh, attendant bows and beats it it's <laughs> <laughs> fair Whoosh. Oh. I wouldn't want to be in the scene if I didn't absolutely have to be <laughs> yeah. All right. continue Let's approaching draw. <laughs> yep. So uh Court closes the distance to you pretty fast and kind of squats down to get a better look at you guys. Hello again. Hello. Hello. Great Cord. Hello. Uh, you are new. What is your name? Uh my name is May Udall, but you can call me a little sparkle. Ah, uh, Numb the Gare, huh? Yes. And you? I am Sakara of Adasokichi, Lord Baron in absentia of Oblia and Scion of the Shores. Oh, the pleasure titles. is mine. So, Orem, what brings you back? Well, as you know, the Treaty of Worms has dissolved um, mm -hmm. a god and essentially a god and a half have have died or no longer part of the treaty and uh, there is a time limit before all of time becomes unraveled and so we have been dispatched to go and seek potential allies who might be willing to come to the table and negotiate or at least re-establish the treaty uh, so that uh, the entire universe stays together. And we're mm -hmm. hoping that in your wisdom and in your understanding of how you were able to help the last time there was a great, uh, a great trouble that, uh, that you might be willing to help again. Yeah, chuckles. It's not like I did that much last time. Uh, you know, every little bit did help, and and yours was your contribution was uh, was very necessary, and and did aid in the end. Well, that is good to hear. So tell me, Orm, have you remained strong? I believe so. There have been many great uh, difficulties and 
trials for my people over these last uh, many years. And I believe that I have been able to make my way through those difficulties. I've lost good friends and have remained strong for that. So I believe, yes, I have remained strong. Yes, I can see it. You are very strong. Thank you. He uh, stands up and starts walking into the valley. Uh, we'll follow? Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, you guys kind of have to hustle because he's got a huge stride. <laughs> and he's not like bounding or anything, but you know, just on the stride alone, it's kind of a kind of a thing. So uh, you are forming a new coalition then? Yes. And Arathas would be in charge of that? Uh, Ket might have some clearer answers on that. Hi. Uh, Hello. You and I had not met, but I saw you in Orem Strength. Uh, kind of glance at Orem for a moment. Uh, yes, I am Ket Hazard. Uh, Arathus has put together a new treaty, essentially, mm-hmm. or a reworking of the treaty. Uh it doesn't necessarily put her in charge. Uh, just she was one of the two that proposed something. I see. Uh, the other one being Asmodeus, whose plan almost explicitly put him in charge of Most debates. That is not surprising. Asmodeus is quite a rake. True. He's also actively attempting to interfere with the formulation of any new plans. Hmm. Also not surprising. He, uh, you guys get to the edge of the valley and you see this, um, basically this mountain... Uh, which you could sort of see from the shore. It's like the the tallest point uh, in the um, in the island. Any uh, motions towards it? Um, so this island is, or this mountain is, you know, it's not like a huge peak, but it is. Uh, it's like a round, like a rounded uh, mount type thing. Uh, there's a pathway that goes up it. And uh, you see several buildings with sort of uh, that um, Greek style columns Uh, from where you're at. You can see uh, probably five of them and they do have slightly different architectures. They're not all like the exact same building. Some of them are clearly several stories tall. Some of them are much smaller and just kind of squat. Basically, a little more than a very large bungalow covered in or or held up by columns with a big stone roof. Um, So he motions to that mountain and he says, uh, that is the great mountain of Cord. Uh, Through my many adventures, I captured several godlike monsters and imprisoned them in each of these houses. If you can defeat all 12 of them, I will join your coalition. Hmm. Huh? Give it a shot. <laughs> Sakar? I'm game. Is there anything you can tell us about these monsters? He starts cracking up. I know. I thought I would try. (laughs) Said you collected them through your adventures, correct? Yes. Do you actually want us to fight them, or is this some kind of test? Oh, no. I'm sorry. It was mostly in jest. Uh, That over there is a bathhouse. Uh. That's a (laughs) government building. (laughs) 
<laughs> but I like the fact that you did not immediately balk at this idea. We uh, are very committed to this job of we're saving just really the com- world yeah. again. Saving everything. And, yeah, also just doing insane things in general. <laughs> mm. he, uh, okay. he squats down again. Yes, I can tell. Uh, I trust Arathis, so I will join your coalition. And he holds out his hand and uh, opens it. And there is a shot put in his palm. And he kind of like like a regular human sized shot put, which just looks like a marble marble in his hand. Mm-hmm. And he kind of rolls it towards his uh, index finger and just takes it like a little droplet with his uh, uh, finger and his thumb and like holds it out. I will reach my hand out for it. Okay. Both hands, actually. Okay. Good idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He puts it down. Um, what is Ket's strength? <laughs> he dumps that. Oh boy. Oh boy. It's a ten. Okay, if yep. At ten strength, uh Ket does not drop the shot put. But it is <laughs> it is a right about there. Yes. So there's there's definitely Great. like a like a slightly comical like basically Cat's hands drop all the way down to like his knees and he kind of goes into a squat before step like, into assist. Yeah, he can like straighten up and and carry it. Lift with your legs. Yeah, I mean <laughs> that that's the thing is like you know lifting anything is like once you've got a handle on it, it's fine. But yeah, it's pretty heavy. Bit bit more than a regular shot put. <laughs> mm. Would you like some assistance? I got it. <laughs> so you do. That is a token. You can consider me an ally in this coalition. We very much appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cord. This yes, means and, a lot. Uh, watch, watch out. We encountered the agents of Asmodeus in their waters. Mm, yes. I was told. Hopefully, within a few days, we will have our Navy back, so we will be able to at least patrol our immediate surroundings. Should not be an issue for very long, but Something tells me that um, Asmodeus is not going to care as much from now on. Hmm. He does seem to be getting bolder with each day. Yes, well, I'm not too concerned about it. Well, be safe. Drakistan has already fallen. Yes. I heard about that as well. Do you have any uh, information, perhaps, on any of the other gods that may have awoken, and perhaps who we might uh, also bring to our side? If anything, can we visit your library before we leave? I suppose you could. Not much there, though. Imagine you're more likely to have information on some of the other sleepers than a. Yeah, or any leader. advice on who we should approach next who might also mm. see the way you, you do. Perhaps any friends or allies among the group. Mm. I would not. Fo- or you mean uh, my friends and allies? Yes. Mm. Well, who were you thinking of approaching? I'll list off the other gods that we know have awoken so far. Mm. I do not count many allies among those gods. Mm. Okay. Uh, Certainly uh, 
I mean, I never had any negative interactions with Oranko, but. Uh, would not counting as a ma as an ally. Honestly, if your largest military concern are Asmodeus's forces, I would try to find someone who is unlikely to want to side with them or has an active rivalry with them. Seems reasonable. Uh, do you have any former allies that may yet awaken? I do, but if they do not awaken, then there is no point. Correct. If anyone else awakens, I will contact you. Thank you. Giving our, Thank you. Our scrying number. <laughs> Hopefully it works that way. No. I, I think a god can manage to figure out how to contact us on a, his own. <laughs> yes. he'll, he'll send it, man. Oh, I suppose I should tell you one more thing. Yes. It is going to be quite some time until uh, all of the gods that have awakened are back to their full powers. Mm. So uh, they may uh, make big shows, but they are going to be significantly weakened. This also means that protection might be something else that you can offer them depending on what uh, depending on what uh, state their houses are in it's good to know thank you sure I will get someone to take you to the library thank you he uh Wanders off. Well, that uh, went very well. Yeah, it did. Better than I could have expected. Apparently you made an impression, Orem. Thanks, Kit. Is it normal to be worried that things are going well? <laughs> well, he was the most likely candidate to join us. He is all for the greater good. Mm. It's a good sign. Yes. It's unfortunate, that, it it's unfortunate that he didn't have any positive thoughts about the others on our list. Well, he had at ideas least. at least. And he didn't have immediate uh, worries or people whom we should automatically avoid either so mm -hmm. well let's find this library time is of the essence mm -hmm. and see which creature we have to slay to get inside <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping for a basilisk <laughs> uh, great hoof comes by you need to get into the library we do yes please follow me And uh, he takes you up the hill to one of those buildings that definitely does not have a crazy monster inside, but instead a bunch of books. Hooray. <laughs> it's a lot like the crazy monster. No basilisk, though. If we survive this, I will promise to find you a basilisk. Well, Kit's going to go get to work. I suppose Little Sparkle is going to get to work. Or I may wander around and see what they have in the magic section. Mm -hmm. Sakara may see what those people were uh, practicing up on the hill. <laughs> Seems reasonable. What's Rantis going to do? Uh, I'll help with what research there is. All right. Well, I guess while that's going on, we'll take a break here. And come back next week to see what our studies have uncovered study for a whole week we should get something good hopefully uh, in the meantime <laughs> patreon.com slash major spoilers is where you can support this show and everything we do at major spoilers and until next time here's hoping all of your dice rolls are critical hits this 
This podcast is copyright 2018 by Major Spoilers Entertainment, LLC.